Hi, I'm Apostle Catherine Crick. Welcome to another episode of Revival Is Now. Anointing is the power of God that destroys yokes. As it says in Isaiah 10, 27, the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Today you will learn why anointing is not only important, but it's actually crucial and vital in the body of Christ. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Jesus, when he came to this earth, he demonstrated his love by his power, meaning he did not just say, I love you and leave it there, but every part of his expression of love carried power. In his words, it was not just ordinary words, but he was full of the power of God. So when he spoke, the people could feel, could know the love that he was speaking of. Number two, his words full of power did not just end with the words, but there was action that also carried power. Jesus would see people who were sick and oppressed. And he didn't just say, I'll heal you, I'll deliver you, I want this for you, but he actually did it. He actually healed the sick and delivered the oppressed. And when we read the Gospels, when we look at the ministry of Jesus, it is so much action. Whenever he's preaching the Gospel, miracles are always accompanying his preaching. Healing, deliverance, it's always there. In fact, it says in the Word of God that this is why he came to preach the Gospel and to cast out demons. He went around to many towns preaching and casting out demons. So there was never just preaching, but there was always this action. It was always, he was always preaching, the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but, but of power. This is my love, I've come to save you. I've come to save you from the things you're suffering from, the bondage of the devil. And now I'm gonna do it. Jesus would, would preach it, and then he would do it. He would deliver the people, heal the sick. That's true love. A parent, when they see their child sick, when they see their child suffering, the only thing that child wants in this world at that moment is for the suffering to be lifted, the pain to be relieved. And so because the parent loves the kid so much, that becomes their biggest want as well. They are gonna do anything they can to help relieve the suffering and pain of their child. So how much more for God? He does not want his children to be in bondage and sick and suffering. And he has the power to help them, to free them, to heal them. So as we see in the gospels, that is exactly what he did. He came in his supernatural power and relieved the suffering, cast out demons, healed the sick. And that's a big meaning of the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Jesus means serious business. His love is such a strong force, so much that it's the greatest power you could imagine, a greater power than tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes. That's his love, the highest degree of power that can do anything to heal you and free you and destroy the works of the devil. This is why Jesus said to the disciples, go preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. This is why it's all together. Go in power. This is why Jesus said, wait until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Do not go and preach without power. These disciples would have been capable of sharing their testimony, of sharing in word what God had done. But Jesus says, no, you need my power to demonstrate my love to the people, to, to heal the sick, to cast out demons, to relieve them from their suffering. And then we see Paul's ministry. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters. When I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Why is the anointing vital? Why do we need it in the body of Christ? Number one, we need the anointing so that others can actually encounter Jesus. My earliest memory 
was giving my life to Jesus at age four in the living room of the house I grew up on with my parents. And from that day, I never doubted in God's existence and His love. I never wanted to turn away from Him. I always loved God. But my Christian upbringing consisted of not knowing that God moved in power, never witnessing miracles, and, I, and, and, and not really thinking much about it when it said that demons were cast out and the sick were healed. I don't know. I don't even remember thinking about it. I think maybe I thought it was just history, like it happened back then, but it doesn't happen anymore. I never doubted God, but He was not tangible to me so much. It was more like He was far away, and I never really had a, an encounter with Jesus. It was more of just a belief that He exists, kind of like how people believe in Santa Claus. It was more like, I believe, but I have never had a tangible encounter with Him. So when I was in high school, I ended up stepping one foot into the world and beginning to live a lukewarm Christian life where I wasn't really having the fear of God. I wasn't fully surrendered. I still loved God and I was going to church and, and I loved to talk about God. That was my favorite thing. But I was still living in the world. I would still party. I would still have selfish desires and go after them. When I moved from upstate New York to Los Angeles in 2013, the moment I got to LA, God did something in my heart. He put hunger in me. He put a fire, he put a hunger. Like this hunger of, I really believe there's more of God and I wanna discover more of God. And the Bible says that you will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole heart. And that's my story. I began to seek God more than I ever had before. I encountered the power of God for the very first time. I witnessed people be healed. I witnessed demons manifesting in people and being cast out for the first time. I received a prophetic word for the first time in my life and it opened up my eyes to God's nearness and that He really has been with me and that He really knows me. I remember coming back after witnessing the power of God moving and really being touched by the power of God for the first time through a prophetic word where God became so real and tangible like never before. Like, wow, He's real, He knows me, He's been with me. I remember that day just saying out loud to God, in awe, God, before I believed in You, I believed You were real, I believed You loved me, I believed Your Word was true, but now I know that You're real. I know that you love me so much. I know that your word is true. And I know that the plans you have for me are good. It was this deep knowing. What happened was because I actually encountered God in power, I had this tangible experience with Jesus. My spiritual eyes opened up. Where before I was like, I believe. I believe God's out there and he loves me. But I really, that's all, that's about it. But now it's like my eyes had opened up and though I didn't see Jesus' face, I didn't hear an audible voice, but in the spiritual realm, I could see. Like meaning Jesus became as real as anything I could touch or see. This chair <laughs> in my life. I knew that I knew that I knew that he was with me. He loved me. He. He was for me. His word was true. I was never the same from that day. And a month later, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. And when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, this was a way I had physically encountered God for the first time as my tongue is being overtaken by the Holy Spirit. Ashia robarakia. This was the first time I had experienced something so physical, supernatural in my body. And that experience and just the fire of God coming upon me, it opened up my eyes in an even deeper level to feel in my heart that all I wanted to do was surrender to God. Because a fear of God, the fear of God came upon me for the first time. Like before it was like, yeah, I love God like casual <laughs> my whole life but but now it was like as i imagine what when, when we go to heaven and we just see jesus and we're just like speechless and we can't talk and we just fall on the ground and worship him 
oh, you are holy, you are holy, you are holy, and that's all we can think. Like, it was a glimpse of that where I knew, like, where all of a sudden the fear of God came upon me to see the Lordship of Jesus. And, and in that moment, I just felt like, who am I not to surrender to God? Who am I? And, and who am I to think that my plans could be better than God's? It was just this great revelation, this great opening of my eyes to see God so much more magnified than I ever had before. And in that result, seeing myself in humility so much smaller than I ever had before compared to God's Lordship. And so in that moment, I surrendered to God my entire life and it's all I wanted. It's the only thing that felt right. I surrendered my dreams, my will, my plans, everything. Those things I hadn't actually given up with my heart. Like, Lord, I want you to have them. Take them if they're not yours and give me new dreams if you want, whatever. I remember just feeling this desperation. Like, Lord, the thing that I don't want the most in the world, you can even do that. You can... I didn't like to be alone and I was like, you can send me to a deserted island where there's nobody. I felt this desperation like, Lord, I surrender. I really surrender. I had been wanting to surrender to God for years. Like I was really realizing like, man, I've been lukewarm. I have one foot in the world and this isn't right. I, I understand that it's right to surrender to God. I don't want to be fake. You know, I, I was already feeling that way, but I was stuck. I didn't know why I was stuck. I didn't know why. I couldn't surrender. I was going to a huge church at the time and I was hearing kind of like such a similar message every single week. It was kind of like the, the milky basic salvation message. And it was like every message was trying to convince people, this is why you should believe in God. And now do you, do you want to give your life to Jesus? Raise your hand. And I genuinely wanted to surrender every time. And I would raise my hand and I would say, yes, Lord, I'm all in. But week after week, nothing was changing in me. And I wasn't surrendering even though I wanted to. But when I encountered the power of God for just a few times, I was then able to surrender for the first time in my life. After this experience, I can fully understand what Paul means when he says this. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. You see, I had been hearing countless sermons several times a week of wise and persuasive words. Wise and persuasive words persuading people to believe in Jesus. But these messages did not contain the power of God. And so the reason I was unable to surrender all that time was that my faith was being based on man's word. Even since I was a little child, I believed because my parents told me there's nothing wrong with that. I was raised up to love the Lord. It's a beautiful thing, but it's like I never actually had an encounter with Jesus, with his power for my faith to be so solid on him, to rest on my experience, my encounter my personal encounter with him. So from the time I was a kid to now in my 20s, I was just hearing these wise and persuasive words. Believe in Jesus. You should give your life to Jesus. This is why, without power. And so my faith was resting there on the words. And so that's why my faith wasn't able to be big enough to surrender everything to Jesus. But one day there was a vessel who demonstrated the power of God. Just like Apostle Paul says, my message and preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. There was a vessel of God who carried anointing and he demonstrated the Spirit's power. And the word goes on to say, as Paul demonstrated the Spirit's power, you, when he does, then your faith will not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. That's what happened for me. All of a sudden, I am witnessing the power of God, how real Jesus is. And whoa, revelation of his love for his people, that he wants to free his people, that he wants to heal his people, that he knows me and that he loves me. And that out of all things he could choose to speak through a vessel, he spoke such encouragement and love to me through the prophetic word. And so my faith in that moment was rested on God's power, 
on my encounter, my real experience with him. And so when your faith rests on God, on his power, then you're able to surrender to Jesus. In fact, then it becomes easy to surrender to Jesus. To surrender to Jesus went from being, and from the moment I surrendered, that surrender has just grown. Even just one encounter with God's power where my spiritual eyes opened, it was enough to last me a very long time, even a lifetime. I mean, my eyes had opened up and I couldn't unsee the goodness, the love, the almightiness of God. It was enough for me to really surrender and to stay in that place of surrender and for that surrender to grow to this day. This was seven years ago that I had this encounter with the power of God for the first time. And I still get so excited to talk about it. And I remember from that day, my biggest passion became for everyone else in this world to really encounter God in power. My heart immediately burned for the many, many Christian friends and family I accumulated in different spheres of life. I knew that I was like, kind of pretty much the only person who would actually encounter the power of God based on my conversations with my friends and family. And I could see that all of my friends and family were in the same place I was before, not burning for Jesus and, and perhaps not truly surrendered because the encounter with God's power was needed. It became my biggest passion. And I never imagined that God was going to use me in power to be like Paul and be like my message of preaching. We're not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the power so that your faith can rest on God's power. I didn't know God was going to use me to help people encounter his power, <laughs> but it did become my greatest passion for others to simply encounter God's power. I thought it was going to be me just like inviting everyone to to come to church where God's power was moving. But this became one of the confirmations when I knew it was God speaking to me about nine months after this, when God spoke through a prophet and said, you're called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ. God's gonna use you in miracles. One of the big confirmations I knew that even though I didn't want that, I didn't wanna be a minister, I didn't wanna be an apostle, I didn't wanna pray for people. I wanted to see people touched by God's power, but I didn't, I felt shy and inadequate and I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I just wanted to cheer that people were receiving miracles and encounters with God. <laughs> But that was a big confirmation for me that I knew it was God speaking because that became my biggest passion above all else, above what my biggest pursuit and dream was of music. My biggest passion became for others to actually encounter God's power because that was the best thing that happened to me in my life. That is the moment I fell in love with Jesus before I loved Jesus. But when I actually met Jesus through that encounter of his power, my eyes could really see his love and when you see his love, he is irresistible and you can't help but fall in love with Jesus. And I fell in love with Jesus that moment that I encountered his power. God has chosen to put himself in vessels. This is the biggest way that he touches his people is through vessels. In fact, for me, my biggest encounters with Jesus, including the ones I just described, all happened through a vessel. It all happened by God's power, his anointing moving through a vessel and touching me. From prophetic words, baptism of Holy Spirit, impartation of anointing, they all came through a vessel. It's just how God's chosen for it to be that he chooses to put himself in vessels and touches people. And so, because of that, this is why anointing is vital. Because since God chooses to touch his people the most through people, we cannot have partial God in a vessel. We cannot have God just coming in words, but not power. That's not even the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not about talk, but a power. That's, that's why I was missing revelation and encounters with Jesus for my whole life up till seven years ago because I hadn't encountered vessels who actually carried the fullness of Jesus, his anointing, his power. It is God's will for every child of God, every vessel to carry him in his fullness, to carry his power. Because this is how 
the most amount of people in this world can will actually have real encounters with Jesus so their eyes can open up to his love, fall in love with him, give their lives to him. We as vessels of God should burn for his anointing to come in our lives. Because the more of Jesus in us, the more of his power, the more of God that's gonna come out of you, the more, the more people will encounter, will really encounter God's power in this earth. We need the anointing so people can actually have encounters with Jesus. You know, it wasn't just the miracles, the supernatural experiences like the miracles that opened up my eyes to God's love, but it was also experiencing my spirit, my spirit man coming alive by the anointed words coming through other vessels. I would position myself to, to receive true anointed teaching and my spirit man was being fed for the first time in my life. It was coming alive. I was feeling so on fire for God, just listening to the word of God for the first time. I was feeling energized. I was, the tiredness was going away. I was feeling energized. I was feeling so excited for God. Just hearing an anointed message would make me just so in love with Jesus and, 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 and so focused on him after leaving church. This is the power of the anointing. And so when you can position yourself in a church, in ministries, and like here you are now where anointing's flowing, you're positioning yourself to have constantly be encountering God in power, receiving miracles, and having your spirit man be fed, come alive through the word that carries power. And this is why Paul says, my, me my message and preaching were not with wise and persuasive words. That's not what's needed. Simple words are all that's needed, but simple words, simple words of truth that actually carry power, that can bring transformation and change. Anointed teaching feeds your spirit man, which opens your spiritual eyes to grasp things in the spiritual realm, to really comprehend it and get it and have this excitement and zeal to be spiritual, to follow the principles of the word of God that's been illuminated by the anointing released to you. Receiving anointed teaching makes you want to run to the word of God. And when you read the word of God, it begins to come alive like never before, where before it might've been boring or you didn't really feel like reading it or you didn't understand it. We need the anointing for people to actually encounter Jesus and also for people's spirits, spirit man to be fed, come alive and become more spiritual. God wants to release this anointing to you today for you to be a vessel of this anointing. Lift your hands now to God as he releases this anointing upon you. May you be filled now with God's power that pierces hearts, that brings transformation. I declare the sick to be healed through you. I declare demons to recognize who you are in the spiritual realm and to Go at your command. I declare people to have real encounters with Jesus through you. And as you talk about Jesus, that their spirits would come alive and they would become on fire for Jesus. I speak the fire of God to fill you, passion, zeal. And if you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, God wants to release this to you right now. This gift is for every child of God. And this gift comes when you surrender everything to Jesus. So right now, close your eyes. Surrender to Jesus. Surrender to surrender your dreams, your plan, your will. Really give him everything. If you've been holding back in some areas, now is the time to give God everything right now. I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon you now. Be filled with the fire of God. Be filled to overflow in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Here's an example of how spiritual eyes open up when God's power touches a person. Jesus, he, he rebuked him to your spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you come out of him and never enter him again. Jesus, Jesus took, took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. Pero Jesús lo tomó de su mano y él se levantó. Jesus is delivering you right now. Jesucristo te está Because the Bible's alive. Porque la Biblia. And Jesus is delivering his people. Está en su boca ahora y habla. And I come in on three every spirit attached. God, I'm going to you all in Jesus' name. One, two, three. Yes. 
Gloria a Dios. Gloria a Dios. Aleluya. Hallelujah. The power of God. Yes. Touch her and allow her to lay down on the ground and be touched by God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. 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 Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The kindness of God leads to repentance. She's saying, I'm so, she's saying, I'm so sorry. This is what happens when your eyes open up to God's love. By Him touching you in power. This mighty conviction comes upon you. When you see Jesus. This, this conviction to be like Him. <laughs> like to be pure and good. That's what's happening now. She's changed forever. And she will, she will love her children and everyone in her life like never before. Because that's what happens when your eyes open up to God's love and you just want to please Him. This is so beautiful. She's saying, I'm so sorry because the kindness of God leads us to repentance. Your life will never be the same from today. It's like looking at someone just going to heaven and come back. Thanks for joining me for another episode. And I can't wait for what God's going to do on the next one. Revival is now. Kingdom man.